Bandwagon bus, man. Hell of a game. Two went for 500. BWB. Bandwagon bus. That's right. Buff Nation. What up? BWB. My bandwagon buffs. What it is, what it does, and what it's gonna be. It's your man's Harry Billion. Welcome to the Liberian Perspective. Please do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. Make sure to give me the thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you can get the videos as soon as I upload it to YouTube. All right, family. I gotta go ahead and get into this video real quick. So that's all the business i got you know what time it is let's work so guys it seems like every video now i'm apologizing for my voice but it is that time of year in new york where the weather starts to change gets a little colder that's when my sinuses start to give me an issue the last time i did a video sounding like this somebody said in the comments why does it sound like he's fighting back a sneeze you guys are savages in the comments but like I said, the show must go on. Anyways, by now, most of us have heard what Jay Norville, the head coach of the Colorado State University, had to say about Coach Prime. It has dominated the headlines. But there's something else here that a lot of people are not talking about. It's real subtle. So I'm going to go ahead and play the clip, and I want you to go to the comments and tell me if you caught this. And I sat down with ESPN today, and I don't care if they hear it in Boulder. I told them I took my hat off, and I took my glasses off, and I said, when I talk to grown-ups, I take my hat and my glasses off. That's what my mother taught me. So... Did you guys catch that? I don't know how many people caught it, but I'm going to play the clip one more time and go to the comments and tell me if you caught it. And I sat down with ESPN today and I don't care if they hear it in Boulder. I told them I took my hat off and I took my glasses off and I said, when I talk to grown-ups, I take my hat and my glasses off. That's what my mother taught me. <laughs> so... If you didn't catch it, what I'm talking about, not just the co-host, but it's the people in the background cheering, clapping, and laughing. That's what I want to talk about. Here's the thing about the co-host and the people in the background laughing. When you're in a group and somebody makes a joke, one of two things are going to happen. You're either going to laugh because the joke is funny and you agree that the joke is funny. You might respond or laugh due to peer pressure. Sometimes you may just chuckle. But for the most part, sometimes people laugh because everybody else is laughing. The question that I have is the co-host and the people that are laughing do they agree with the notion that Coach Prime wasn't raised well? Wasn't raised right by his mother? Do they agree with the notion that Coach Prime doesn't have interview etiquette or that he doesn't know how to act or he doesn't know how to properly conduct himself in interviews when he's talking to grown-ups? Are they laughing because they agree with that or they're laughing because it's a group thing? It seems kind of right. It reminds me of another thing. Sometimes you may be in a group and somebody may make a bad joke. Like, let's just say you were amongst some friends and they said the F word while they were talking about the LGBT community and then some people bust it out laughing and then you laugh along with them. Would you laugh because you agree? Or I'll give you another one because a lot of people here are Christians. So I'll give you this. You among some friends and somebody makes a dirty joke. Somebody makes a sexual dirty joke. If you are a Christian, do you laugh because the joke is funny or do you laugh because you agree with the sexual dirty joke? I mean, there's a lot of examples I can give you. See, I have these questions because I want to know what these people are thinking. You got to be careful who you are amongst. And if they are laughing because they agree that coach prime doesn't know how to conduct himself when he's talking to grown-ups he needs to take his hat off or he wasn't raised right if they're agreeing with that i wonder if they understand the economic impact that coach prime is having i wonder if they understand that coach prime always talks about his old school values saying yes sir yes ma'am holding doors open for women respecting women always talking about how he was raised right and his mother taught him the right way to do things to conduct himself I don't ever remember my mom or any grown-up telling me, when you talk to grown-ups, take your hat off. I don't remember that. Now, the only thing that I know about shades is if you're inside, you don't wear dark shades. That's the only thing that people talk about, but it's more of a personal preference, not necessarily something where a grown up or mama has told us, hey boy, take your hat off when you're talking to grown folk. I don't remember that. Maybe some of you guys do. Again, I came here in 1989 and that's where my American experience started. So I don't know what you guys do, but I know I don't remember seeing it on the Cosby or Martin. I don't remember seeing it on any of the television shows that were on when I came to the United States. A lot of us grew up on tv like the cosby the huxtables i don't ever remember saying take your hat off when you talk to grown folk i don't remember that but that's not the point i'm trying to make here the point that i'm trying to make here is the people that are clapping and cheering and laughing at what jay norvell said do they really know coach prime do they really agree with coach norvell but isn't that funny like it doesn't this sound so familiar why is it that when we're dealing with coach prime that being raised well being raised the right way it gets so personal somebody tell me why does it always have 
have to take a personal twist. Does this sound familiar to a lot of you guys? Like you're cheering and you're clapping where one African-American coach is insinuating that another African-American coach wasn't raised right and everybody's clapping and everybody's laughing. Why does it always get to that personal place when it comes to Coach Prime about how you were raised? Why do we always talk about that? It sounds way too familiar that it's just like it always go back to those kind of conversations. When I asked you guys the questions online, are these things that we should talk about? Are these the things that the sport is dealing with? We shouldn't touch these things, just keep talking about football. Why? Why do we always have to answer the question? But there's another thing here that I want to discuss. Everything that Coach Prime is doing for the state of Colorado. I want to remind you guys that this is Colorado State University. I'm going to say it again. Colorado State University. This university is in Colorado. And I know you guys are asking me, well, okay, yes, Harry B, we get it. Why do you keep repeating it? The reason why I keep repeating it is because the effect that Coach Prime has had on Colorado is tremendous. Because Coach Prime is in Colorado, because he is the coach at CU, the local businesses, the local economy has drastically changed since Coach Prime arrived. People in the media and in the world are calling that the prime effect. The economic changes are undeniable. Let me give you some stats on just what's about to happen these next couple of days. Look at this. So this is Friday, September 15th. Let's talk economics for a second. Live from CU Business Field. First take with Stephen A. Smith. The Pat McAfee Show. College Football Live. Sports Center. I'll give you a little bit of an insight on what all of these shows being in Boulder being in Colorado is going to mean. We're talking economics, guys. This is for the people that are laughing. This is for the people that are insinuating that Coach Prime was erased right. For those people who just can't bring themselves to leave this guy alone personally, to just stick with football. So I'm a media guy. You guys know that I've been in Boulder and I went to Texas. For all of these shows to get to Boulder, all of these shows in Colorado, money will be exchanged for all of these shows to have a presence in Boulder. The local economy is gonna benefit from all of these shows being in Boulder. So let me show you a shot. I want you to take a look at this. You see this set right here? You see all those lights? You see the talent over there signing autographs? You see this set? All of those cameras, those things gotta be built. Everybody that's behind the cameras. Take a look at this set. That's economics. That's just for one set. Everybody that's on that set. You look at this security guard right here. There are cameramen over here. You look at all these jibs, all of these lights right here. The police officers on bikes that have to be employed. The fence, the guys that have to take the fence, the talent. Sometimes they come with their own personal assistance. Sometimes they do come with makeup artists and they have wardrobe assistance. You have an assistant right here that's on headphones that have to make sure the show is going well. There's a stage manager that's calling all the shots, that's making sure everything is good. This is called economics. I wanted to point this out because when you see all of those shows that are going to Boulder, they all have individuals. All of these people that are working, some of these people are fans. Not everybody here is working, but all of this. This police officer working, that's economics. He has to get paid. If it's his day off and he comes to work, that's overtime. All of these equipment have to be stored somewhere. Somebody is responsible for checking the equipment. They have to get paid. That equipment is not from Texas. That equipment is from wherever their base is. So that means that they got to put these equipment in cases. You see my case. When I travel, I travel with my hard case, with my Pelican case, and my equipment bags. If you were at the games, you see me take out my equipment. So all of these things have to be shipped. That's money. That's affecting the economy so when all of these shows pack their stuff and they come to boulder that is the local economy that's getting money look at the cameraman over here this guy standing right here probably part of the stage management crew this guy right here he's probably a camera director probably has a monitor he's communicating with these headphones and he's telling the cameraman where to turn that could be a technical director we call him a td this guy right here he's either a grip or an electrician all right you see these cranes right here Maybe it's not long enough to be a crane. It could be a jip, but it looks like a crane. The camera's on there. All of these people that's working. And then you see this guy sitting right here. This guy is probably a sound guy. You see the talent over there. It's possible that each can have their own personal assistance that they'll have to bring. And the sound guy is sitting right there. He usually has his headphones on and he's checking, make sure everybody's sounding good. This is probably a stage director. He's staring at me like, who are you? What are you doing? I need to know what's going on. And then you got the jib operator. This guy right here. Let me see if I can get a better shot of him. Right there, that's the crane operator. That long thing right here, that's, that's called a crane. That guy's operating the crane. That camera's on there, or the jib, it has a monitor on there. The sound people are there. 
Everybody's doing their job. What are you showing us, Harry B? You're geeking out right now. The reason why I wanted to show you guys this is the fact that Big Noon does not have the contract to broadcast the game, but they're still deciding to go there because Coach Prime is the hottest ticket in town. Coach Prime is the hottest thing spinning in all of college football. So even if it's not their broadcast, they don't have the right to broadcast the game. It still makes financial sense to them to take all of this equipment and go back to Boulder and just be a part of the show. Even though if they have to be outsiders, they are just going anyway to just be part of the show because they know that just being a part of the show is way better, way better financially than going to go cover another game that nobody cares about, that nobody's going to watch, not that nobody cares about. Stop trying to be politically correct all the time. Nobody cares about. When it comes to business and finances, the big boys, they want money, they need viewership. You guys are always trying to accuse YouTubers of our titles and all of these things. You're clickbaiting. Everybody needs the clicks and the views. That's why we do this. So hit that subscribe button because I'm working. We're all doing it for clicks and views. They're doing the same thing. Fox is doing the same things for clicks and views. They know that being in Colorado, being in Boulder, gets them more clicks and views than being at a game that is inconsequential, that nobody cares about. So when those people are laughing, I wonder if they understand the impact, the financial and economic impact that Coach Prime is having in Colorado right now. I wonder if they're considering that. Or is it inconsequential to them? Or it doesn't matter because he's Coach Prime. And it doesn't matter how good he does. They still would not care. Even though he's affecting all of their bottom line. Even though he's affecting. I'm going to repeat this. Even though he's affecting all of their bottom line. It would never be good enough because he's Coach Prime. You're staring at this Fox Noon thing. This is one of the shots that I took when I was in Texas. You're staring at this set. This is just one set that will be in Boulder. And look how many employees, look how much money that they have on that set. How many people have to get paid? How much water they had to buy? I want to show you. Let me see if I get there. I want to show you this shot right here. Let me show you this shot right here. Boom, right there. Look at that. That water did not come from California or wherever it came from. This is water in a cooler and ice. It was so hot in Texas. This water is from a local business. This is in Texas now. They had to get this amount of water and ice to keep the water cool and for everybody on there to be hydrated during this hot game. This is the local business that's being affected in Texas, in Fort Worth, Texas. For those who couldn't understand the economic part of it, the local business part of it. Is that a 7-Eleven? Is that a local Walmart? Who did buy the water from? They bought it from somewhere, from a local business. Where they get the ice from? Was it from a gas station? They had to buy that ice from a local business. You don't buy ice from your state and then ship it over, <laughs> okay? Unless it's somewhere in the desert, they just have nowhere to get it from. Even though it felt like the desert, good God, it was so hot. Local business. The officer right here probably put it in overtime to protect that set. Local business. Local business, guys. This man right here, looking nice and cool, he's gonna be feeding his family with that overtime money. He's covering the game. He's gonna have stories to tell his kids. Oh yeah, I met X, Y, Z. I met this person, I met that person. Oh yeah, his kids are gonna be like, daddy, oh, you met that person, they're gonna be so happy. This set is gonna be in Boulder. This same thing that you're looking at right here is gonna be repeated. This right here, all those people with the badges, this guy right here, this person right here, if they work for Fox Noon, they're going to Boulder. Could be somebody else, maybe their assignment's gonna change and somebody else is gonna be in Boulder. But this camera guy, somebody gotta go. These lights gotta be there. This set gotta be there. Somebody gotta erect this set and there has to be security guards to protect the talent. That's local business, guys. They're probably going to hire local security, local police officers, auxiliary police officers to come for protection, bodyguards. Sometimes the talent, their agents will get them bodyguards locally. One of my best friends from high school, he has a company that provides bodyguards for events. So when they come to your town, they will call those local companies and say, look, we need a bodyguard for this celebrity, for that celebrity, local economy. Let me show you another graphic, guys. We're making sense today, guys. I want to make it make sense while they're laughing. Let's make it make sense. Dollars. So what I just showed you guys, this show has to do the same thing. This show has to do that thing. This show has to do that. And this show has to do that. So multiply that set by how many here? One, two, three, four. Multiply the staff by four. 
multiply the security by four. They don't use the same security on all these sets. Multiply the amount of bottle of waters and coolers by four. Four different sets. And on that set, they can have at least 20 to 50 people on that set being employed. And then they might hire some production assistants, some PAs from the local film and video commission. When I was there at the spring game, the local film and video commissioner, when he saw me filming, he came over and he introduced himself, gave Keisha his card. He was trying to figure out who we were and what we were doing it for. These guys cannot do that. We didn't have no permit to do that, but these guys need a permit to go to Colorado to do that. They have to register with the film commission to be able to do what they're doing to film there officially. There are going to be taxes and fees that they will have to pay to go do that. That's economics, guys. That's making it make sense. And then on this day, College Game Day Live has the rights to this game. So anybody that wants footage from the game, highlights from the game, they're going to have to get it from ESPN. Fox is going to have to lease the footage from ESPN. And they're going to have to pay a fee for that. But all of them, they all have to go to the film commission in Colorado, in Boulder, and they're going to have to register and probably pay tax and then grease whoever's elbow or palms that they have to grease to get certain things to happen. You know how it works. You know how that goes. They're probably going to reach out to the film commissioner to provide some production assistance to help out because it is probably cheaper to get production assistance locally than it is for you to fly some production assistance over from whatever state you're coming from. That's local businesses that's the local economy these are just some of the ones that we know about if a company like mine's packed up and came over there all of the other companies that are coming they have to fly to denver and then drive over to boulder the airlines the hotels the local businesses the pizza shops the burger joints the chinese restaurants the italian restaurants the halal foods the local Walmarts, the Targets, all of those people. If you get there a few days before the game, you have to go get some water. You have to go get some groceries. All of their employees need to eat, so they have to order food. Local takeout is going to be bouncing. All of that, I'm saying, these people should be cheering for, not laughing at the guy that's making all of this possible. How can you laugh at the guy that's making all of this possible? It doesn't make sense. I got more, guys. And them kids crazy, man. But that's what we had to do. Let you come you in. You see that line? Shoot, the line? The line up this morning for the students to get tickets. Yeah, it was uh, every, every, it was there at 6 a.m. Yeah. But like this, 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 like, like this is like when everybody lists the the season. Everybody's trying to come out. They never been. Some people never been. No, they come to Colorado to get yeah. to get in this game. They say the city made uh, eighteen million last weekend. Ooh. I see, but in 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 the, in the, the hotels already booked right now. You know that. The reality yeah. of it is, guys, that's what's really important. Yeah. They made eighteen million. Last city. Weekend. That's what's really important out of all. Let's run that back. Let's run that back. The line, the line up this morning for the students to get tickets. I'll tell you guys this. Before the TCU game, there's a young lady that that's a content creator on campus that goes to the school, to the, to the university. Is it Pate? She goes on campus and she interviews people. And she was asking some of the students, you know, their predictions of the game. Even the kids that were on the campus, they were a little pessimistic because obviously everybody's going off for last year, not really understanding the diamond that they had at Colorado. So a lot of the kids were saying, nah, we were going to get beat. We were going to get beat. Nobody's were really paying attention. After that first TCU game, now the lines are wrapped around around the building the kids want to go to the game i ain't gonna lie colorado cu kids they are sold i mean they will still go to the game they were committed even when things were not popular so i'll give them that i'll give them that but now from the kids talking like not really believing not really understanding what they had to now lines are wrapped around the building kids can't even get tickets yeah it was, uh, it was there at 6 a.m they say the city made uh 18 million last weekend Ooh. $18 million in one weekend. The city made $18 million in one weekend, guys. I know that we are in America and like, you know, people throw the word, you know, M's millions and stuff like that around. And it seems that like the whole idea of a million dollars is diminished in our head because of hip hop and how we think about money and like a million dollars may not be that much. A million dollars is a lot of money, guys. One million, okay? I'm not talking about 18 of them. I'm talking about one 
million dollars is a heck of a lot of money. It's so much money. <laughs> to make $100,000 is a lot of money. Some people like to brag, oh, I make $100,000 a year. It takes you a whole year to make $100,000. The city of Boulder, okay, the city made $18 million in one weekend because of the Coach Prime effect. That's what's really important. Yep. They made 18 million a city. That's what's really important out of all of the... The city love when you win because everybody around here win. Everybody, everybody the whole town. Because when you win, yeah, all you, you just don't want to go from there home. You lose, you want to go, oh, man. You win the Golden Ronnie's pub. Yep. Ah! Let's go to the pub. Let's go have a beer. Let's go celebrate. Local business wins. So what are they laughing at? What exactly is so funny? Instead of laughing at the man and getting personal on how he was raised, the fact that he's wearing a hat and wearing shades at a meeting and saying that he don't know how to talk to grown folks or he don't know how to properly conduct himself when he's talking to grown folk, instead of focusing on those personal things, why not focus on all of the economic values and the economic juggernaut that he is and that he is bringing to Colorado? Because like I said, all of their bottom line is being affected because of coach prime enrollment is going up at their university because of coach prime enrollment is going up at this cu university because of coach prime all of the local businesses are winning because of coach prime last year no television crews would have cared to cover the colorado state game first of all television stations don't cover lowly games the georgia bulldogs are playing like a alabama or they're playing like a tennessee or a texas those games are covered but if, if georgia's playing like one of those local teams Teams or one of those teams that they just know they're going to get crushed no television station is really going to care about that so tv stations even with the biggest teams they don't really care about the games that you were supposed to win on your schedule that those throwaway games on your schedule this would be known as a throwaway game but look at how many major major all of the major media outlets that are coming to this inconsequential insignificant game we're making it make sense today this is what they should be celebrating and not laughing people don't want to appreciate those things just because of the person the messenger just because they don't like the messenger because you don't like the messenger it doesn't mean that the messenger doesn't have a good message you can hate the messenger but please respect the message he is making a huge impact on your state on your city and here you are laughing and i sat down with the ESPN today and i don't care if they hear it in boulder i told them i took my hat off and i took my glasses off and i said when i talk to grown-ups i take my hat and my glasses off that's what my mother taught <laughs> so i want you guys who are laughing and i want you guys who are giggling i want you to think about it were you laughing at that joke because it was in a group where you felt compelled to laugh did you laugh because you were laughing at coach prime and you don't believe that he was raised right that he doesn't know how to conduct himself when he's talking to grown-ups why were you laughing Will you now consider the economic impact that he is making on your state and on your city? He's affecting your bottom line. For you to have a show, for you to do all of those things that you're doing, it takes money. If the kids don't want to enroll at your university, all of you guys are fired. If enough students do not enroll in your university, all of you guys are fired or gone. So you need to keep doing everything that you can do in your power to make sure that your city, your state is lit. It's a state university, so the state is going to foot the bill, but you got to put some work in. You got to put some butts in those seats so that you can continue to have a job that's what economics is all about you all have to do the best job that you can do to make sure that the city brings in enough money so that you all can have the life that you're living and when you have somebody there like a coach prime who is affecting everybody's bottom line and making sure that the city is popping the state is popping that your bottom line is going to be affected you can go home and rest assured that you are making enough money to be able to feed your family and when that person is affecting all of your bottom lines and making sure that all your families are going to be well that person is to be celebrated not laughed at all right family that is all the information that i have for this video hope you got a little something out of it and if you did please help this channel grow by smashing that subscribe button but i'm gonna have to leave it right there you know who i am i'm harry b and that right there was the liberian perspective that's t l p sports club Brrah.